Okay. 2011 might have been another ordinary year for most of you. It might have been special for some of you who made a friend, traveled, maybe changed schools. But for me, 2011 was a tumultuous year. And so it was for the peoples across the Middle East and North Africa. At that time, I was only 11 years old, and my family was still settling in Tunis after we moved. And while adjusting to my new life, I was witnessing, at the same time, a rebellion, a revolution, the Arab Spring. It was the bloom of the Jasmine Revolution in my home country, Tunisia, the popular uprising that protested corruption, uh, poverty, and political repression. Tunisians have started this revolution for more than one reason. The rising prices, inflation, youth marginalization, the incredible corruption mainly by the dictator's family, uh, and a repressive authoritarian regime. At that time, Tunisia was considered the closest thing to a police state. Elections were farcical. The president even changed the constitution a number of times to be able to run for president again. There was no press freedom, no meaningful political participation. All these issues were piling up and flagging the system, making the people more and more paranoid and frustrated. This built up to that one day when someone just had it with injustice. Unrest begun when Mohamed Bouazizi, president, uh, victim of government corruption and police violence, doused himself in fuel and set it on fire. It was in the small town of Sidi Bouzid, west central Tunisia. Mohamed Bouazizi was a 27-year-old young man with a college degree, yet unemployed, worked as a street vendor. The young man who had been supporting his family by selling fruit from a cart was abused by the police officials who repeatedly demanded bribes and confiscated his merchandise, his only mean of making a living. In this picture, you could see President Ben Ali, the dictator at that time. It, it's a picture that really shows the unsightly reality at that time, and he's next to him. Bazizi's plight showcased a powerful symbol of oppression and triggered tension against the economic injustice afflicting Tunisians under the regime of Ben Ali, which had been taken to the streets by protesters throughout the country. Now, the 11-year-old me didn't know what exactly was going on. I only knew it was something big, something historical. I was in awe whenever my parents were watching the news, seeing the public anger and thus periodic violence erupting in different regions of Tunisia. Many voices all pleading together for justice and change, resisting police brutality, gunshots, risking their lives, until they finally forced the dictator to step down and flee the country. <coughs> It was on January 14th. No one could sleep that night, for it was a night to be remembered for centuries. Tunisians were seen as heroes, champions, setting a model for what was considered to be impossible, for an autocratic leader to be deposed by ordinary people. It was the first time in the Arab word. With hundreds of them killed and abused during clashes with the police, Tunisians were not weakened, and yet again, they proved to the word another outburst of reform, of demand for reform, too powerful that it engulfed the Middle East and North Africa, inspiring Egypt, Yemen, Bahrain, Libya, and Syria. Though Ben Ali was gone, the structure of the dictatorship had not changed for a while. We had to rebuild, to rebuild our government and constitution upon the fundamental right of freedom of expression in the midst of our transitional period. Tunisians have joined efforts to establish the new system of government and turn the old dictatorship into a democracy. Now imagine an accumulation of decades of colonizing forces followed by despotic leaders. Imagine a people who have been told what to do for decades are now finally able to demand what needs to be done. So we wrote a new constitution, protected all rights of all citizens, recognized freedom of speech and allowed the people to chime in the reform process. Voting had become synonymous and people were heard. The Nobel Prize, the Nobel Peace Prize for 2015 was in fact awarded to the Tunisian National Dialogue Quartet for its decisive contribution to the building of a pluralistic democracy in the wake of the revolution. Fast, for, fast forward seven years, I traveled and met people from around the world, learned about their 
history, their economics, and every time I just can't help but reflect on our story and juxtapose it to other stories, then I ask myself, have we really achieved the goals of the Tunisian revolution? Our country has been glorious boast of becoming a progressive leader in the Arab word, of punching above its weight, of granting the most rights to women, and so on, might as well be pulled backwards as we still face minority issues, income and justice, more unemployment. This question and many others, for which I still don't have an answer, keep tormenting me as I think of going home, of my future in Tunis. Now, when, when I say the Arab Spring, you guys would imagine that these countries have been in a winter all along, and with the revolutions came the first signs of hope, renewal, rejuvenation, like the first blossom you see in spring after a dreary, colorless winter. But one cannot overlook the bloodshed that came along with it. Thinking about the Arab Spring leaves me with a smile and a pit in the stomach. The smile is for witnessing a whole swath of humanity regaining its dignity. But the pit comes from my increasing concern that we're still far away from achieving our goals. And though I cannot speak for the unnamed that were killed and tortured, for Mohammed Barsizi who set himself on fire, for those who confidently faced the gunshots. All I can say is it is now time for us to invest in education, to promote social justice, and for our new generation to be aware of our greatest task, preserving democracy and resolving that the freedom fighters have not died in vain, that the hopes of the revolutionaries will not perish. Therefore, I believe that our fight is unfinished. Thank you.